Hi folks, it's been a while. Apologies for that, I've not been out at all. Uh, long story short, it's the ankles again and uh, I'm awaiting a surgery appointment. So, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. This is my first video for a while. And uh, basically, I've got one of these today. So I'm taking the opportunity to give it a test burn, flash off the paint, and, uh, and basically uh, an excuse for an outdoor brew because I can't get out and have one in the outdoors. So on my on my patio, we'll have to do. So without further ado. See how long that takes. slip Stove jack. Video in it. And carry bag. Bits. A bit of packing that's come and gone. A bit of brochure. And that's going to be here.
the uh, the ash catcher, which goes about there, I believe. Birch bark. Amazing tinder. Some store bought kindling. Bag of logs. Here's the wood pile that I've prepared. I've said. Okay, let's see if we can get a fire going. The trick is not to choke the fire too quickly. Make sure the flue's wide open. Okay, so whilst I get the fire going, here's a few details about the stove and the 45 degree stove fleshing kit that I bought. The stove is an Outbacker Frontier stove, as sold by outbackerstoves.co.uk, as is the fleshing kit. Both these items can be found on the Bell Tent Boutique website, but I've noticed that the prices there are a little higher there, despite them being the same company. The Outbacker Frontier is designed to go in a four meter or similar sized bell tent and would be way too big to go in a small la uh, TP tent such as a Polish Lavu or a, a One Tigris Smoky Hut TP. If you have either of these tents then you need to be looking at the smaller Outbacker firebox tent, sorry, <laughs> firebox stove. The Frontier is also available with a glass door for an extra £26 but I decided not to go down this route as it's just one extra thing to break. 
As you can see, the stove is a nice compact size and when it breaks down, the flue pipes can be placed inside the body of the stove. It all fits very nicely in the supplied hole hole. It weighs 10 kilograms, so unless you're a, formerly an infantry support platoon uh, infantry, <laughs> you won't be backpacking with this thing. Here's the basic stats in millimeters. The overall height from the bottom of the legs to the top of the flue is 2,725 millimeters. The footprint of the stove with the legs extended is 835 by 550 millimeters. That's like looking down on the stove to the extent of the legs to the back of the stove, etc. Just make sure that the top of the tent is lower than the height of the flue. Obviously, uh, you don't want it below it because it's going to be either touching your tent or inside it. <laughs> uh, if, uh, if your tent's higher than this, then you can buy extra flue sections should you need them. The body of the stove is 450 millimeters long by 250 millimeters wide and most, most of this area is available for cooking except for where the flow exits in the back left corner this is also where the uh, the optional water heater can be uh, can be placed the stove body is 192 millimeters at the deepest part and the cooking surface is 550 millimeters off the floor the hole in the top surface is 150 millimeters wide and this allows large pans and skillets to be placed directly over the fire for more heat transfer and also allows access for cleaning out there's a folding carrying handle on the left of the stove with a rigid rail on the right i'm guessing that you could hang cooking utensils off this rail but this uh, this might get hot so just take care the bottom flue section contains a, re a rotating damper vane to control the flow of air through the stove and thus control the burn and the door also has a semi-closed position on the latch. The top flue section has a spark arrestor built in and also a three-way guiding point to stabilize the flue in windy weather. You'll have to supply your own guy pegs though. Although I haven't had a chance to use this in a tent yet, I'm really impressed with the stove and I'm looking forward to some serious outdoor cooking with the cast iron cookware set that I have my eye on. Now, let's settle back and watch the fire for a bit.
see we've got a bit of smoke coming off the paintwork now as paint hardens and cures off properly. That's why it's important to burn these things outdoors first. Don't know whether you can hear that. The pot's starting to sing. boil in about 13 and a half minutes Just remember that's a glass plate, that's a glass table, and this is a red hot cup. <laughs> anyway, cheers everybody. So that's what it looks like after the kettle's been on it for a while. Let's just see if I can drop you down a little bit more. See right inside there. 